Okay, so this is a Hino truck um, that we are working on. Uh, it belongs to one of our um, one of our customers. I think we've done quite a number of their of their fleet um, fleet trucks, right? It belongs to Proton. Um, it has got a DPF problem, um, and um, what happens is the usual story. Um, you start this truck. <coughs> and um it will start to show a dpf light and then check light comes on and then sometimes it doesn't rev uh to exceed uh, 1100 rpms so i'm gonna start it you're going to find out that it will not um, um it will not rev uh, beyond let's say 1500 rest per minute so i'm going to put my foot down all the way down right all the way down you can see my my foot is really pressed and um, this is the best it can do. It's not revving beyond 1,000, 1,100, right? It's not revving beyond that, right? Um, and sometimes it smokes white smoke. So that's what we are going to be um, resolving on this truck. Um, and after we have resolved that, um, then we release it to the client. Um, I, I think I've done probably maybe this could be the second second video where I've been talking about these uh, you know trucks, the problems that they have, how they start to misbehave with this um, DPF issue, right? So all you just have to know is that um, the moment that you that vehicle, the moment that you import that vehicle, the moment that you um, start using it for the first time here in Zimbabwe or in Africa, you know, the best thing to deal with these uh, Hino trucks is to, or Toyota Dinas, is to deal with the DPF, right? Once you've dealt with the DPF, you will know that um, you will, um, your truck is going to be perfect for the next, I don't know how many years. You can operate for as long as you like. You will not have uh, problems with that truck. So long, you make sure that you are putting the right quality of fuel inside your, in your tank, right? Um, so that's the story that we are we we, we are working uh, these trucks and um, all we are simply doing is we are converting that truck to non DPF just like those that come from South Africa. Um, mostly the reasons why we are getting these trucks from Japan and from Europe is because they are very cheap, cheaper than what we get those ones that are in uh, that we import from South Africa. So basically, we are doing that conversion to so that they operate the same as um, the trucks that come without a, a, a DPF system. Um... So let's say it's the first time, right, that you have, um, you are hearing about this DPF, right? Um, you've just heard that your car has got a DPF problem and you've just researched to find out how to solve it or what exactly it is, right? And you don't know exactly what a DPF is and what exactly it's doing, right? Now, a DPF is a system of emission, right? It has been implemented on these um, trucks, right, from as early as um, 2004, right, where the laws have now had started to force manufacturers to start putting these uh, emission systems so as to limit the amount of pollution that they are causing, right, the amount of um, um, diesel particles, particle matter that gets into the air, right. That's pretty much what a DPF is doing, right, limiting the amount of carbon footprint that gets into the air, right. Um, now, the... The way that a DPF is supposed to work is it's supposed to work, it's intended to work for the lifetime of the vehicle, right? It's not something that is supposed to fail. Um, it is supposed to last the lifetime of the vehicle. It's different from your fuel filters, air filters, and your oil filters, which you periodically change, right? Every service interval. With a DPF, it's totally different, right? It, 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 it really lasts the lifetime of the vehicle, and it is something, it's something which is not cheap, right? Um, so usually when these DPFs begin to fail, it's a sign that there is a problem some way, right? Like, for example, there are three reasons why um, those DPFs uh, pretty much fail, right? The first one being that um, your, your driving habit, right? Uh, where you'd find out that vehicles which are fitted with a diesel particle filter are intended right um to be to and supposed to be given enough time right enough time for them um to to go about the process of doing their self cleaning as you drive so if you are using that vehicle for a short distance if you are running it for a short period of time or driving it for a short distance you're not giving it enough time for it to do its self cleaning process which it is supposed to do from time to time so for example if you are driving it let's say your office 
this is in town uh, which is six kilometers away from your house and you use that uh, truck for such a short distance or it goes just on those short journeys um, what's going to happen is that that dpf is going to fail right it's going to fail pretty faster than um, any other um, vehicle similar vehicle which is being used on highways right so that's number one your driving habit now the second reason why these dpf dpfs tend to fail is due to the um, um quality of fuel that you are using right so you'd find out that usually in these first world countries they've got the best quality of fuel right um um uh, however if you have put your fuel which has got contaminants in it what's going to happen is when that fuel burns those contaminants are going to stick in in, in inside the exhaust inside the deep diesel particle filter and then problems begin to start there it will clog and it will not um, that um, situation of clogging will not be resolved by the normal process uh, which it cleans itself as it drives right so th that becomes an issue and it particularly becomes a bigger issue for uh, those people who are in third third world countries right where the fuel quality is generally of less quality than what you find in your first world countries so it, it's usually common for these dpfs to fail particularly in your third world countries right um, so that's your your reason number two which causes them to fail now the third reason that causes um your dpf to fail is when your air to fuel ratios are, make, uh, are beginning to fail now what i mean by uh, fa failing of your air to fuel ratio is whereby um as you are aware um how power is generated by your vehicle is you've got your air mixing with your fuel right to create an explosion right and then the result becomes power so there is an optimum mix that happens which is your air to fuel ratio mixture so when your air to fuel ratio mixtures are now incorrect where your air is less and your diesel is more uh where that uh, there's where the, the where there becomes that excessive um fuel or a high amount of carbon that is created in the combustion process that's when you start to see uh, your dpf starting to fail right so we are saying that high amount a high amount of uh, pollution is being created but your system is unable to deal with uh, the dpf as it clogs so usually a bad air to fuel ratio happens uh, due to uh, let's say a failing turbo your injectors failing or your EGR are failing. So when those things start to fail again, it's gonna affect your turbo, your 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 DPF, and there becomes a problem, right? So that's what um, usually happens um, as to what what then causes these DPFs to fail, right? So the symptoms that you are going to see when you have got a DPF problem is number one, particularly on this uh, you know truck is first of all you are going to start to see that light uh, sometimes flashing, right? And sometimes when it flashes, um, it's going to be followed by loss of power you are also going to see a check engine light which then comes afterwards when that check engine light comes um you are going to see uh, a, a deliberate limit of power right which is going to happen so limit of power pretty much follows after those lights have have, 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 have started to show right sometimes you are also going to notice that that vehicle will will, will not rev beyond 1100 rpms for some you see that they will not rev beyond uh 2000 i think 2200 uh, with the check engine light on right so all this limit of rpm happens when a check engine light is on so that's what you're going to see is 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 the next thing that happens the next other thing that will happen is that you will see your fuel consumption will generally rise right especially when you see it flashing that uh dpf light you are going to see your fuel consumption uh going through the roof right it's just going to be so high that sometimes that vehicle feels uneconomical to actually use right so pretty much that's what happens right and again you might see some occasional white smoke right especially when you're in traffic right like well, not when you're driving but let's say when you've stopped in traffic then you start to see the vehicle puffing white smoke so that's uh but as you drive away now as you are driving you won't see any smoke but it only happens when it's not driving when it's stationary or when it is in traffic so those are some of the symptoms that you're going to see when you're beginning to have a dpf problem on this particular truck right so what to do when you have seen that you've got uh, a dpf problem on this truck so you've got three solutions which are at your disposal right three things that you can do in order to solve this one so i'm going to talk about them and the advantages or disadvantages uh, of, of each of them so the first first one that uh, solution that you can attend to is called um, regeneration right 
Now you can find somebody um, within your area or wherever you are who's got a computer, who's got a diagnostic computer, um, and they can try to run what we call regeneration, right? So they will plug their computer, they're going to put the vehicle into regeneration mode. It's going to start revving itself as it tries to clear up that DPF system, right? Now, this solution is usually a short-term solution. Um, and remember what I said uh, that uh, there are three main reasons that cause your DPF to fail. So let's say that the system is finished to clear itself and your air to fuel ratio mixtures are not right. Your car goes out, it dries again. In a short period of time again, you are going to see yourself coming back with a DPF problem. This is the reason why I say it can be a short term uh, solution. So this is why you might want to check what has caused your DPF to fail before you even try any of these solutions. So the first one I said is regeneration and you can try it and sometimes it can be a short term solution. It, particularly in third world countries, this is usually a short term solution. We might just work for a day, a week, or might not even work at all sometimes, right? Um, so that's the first solution that you can try. But if you're in your uh, first world countries, uh, this is this pretty much will work. Um, this will pretty much work, and you will not have uh, problems thereafter. So the second uh, solution that you can you can try. Let's say you've tried regeneration, if, and you've seen that regeneration is no longer working on on your truck. It means that at this point you have no choice but to buy a brand new DPF. You have to buy another DPF. So that is the second choice that you have, which is on the table. But unfortunately, these DPFs are very expensive. And once you have bought one, you do not have a guarantee that that DPF is going to um, is not going to fail. You do have no guarantee that it's going to continue working. So remember what I talked about, the reasons why, the reasons that cause your DPF to fail, right? So if none of these have been addressed, and you go on and buy a brand new DPF, it's going to be a waste of money. It's going to be a waste of time. Particularly for the guys in third world countries like ourselves who are in Africa. You go out there, you go and buy a brand new DPF. Um, it's as good as you've just thrown money in the toilet and you've flushed it away, right? Why? Because um, because of the quality of fuel that we have, right? So that is what is causing these DPFs to fail. So when you go and buy a brand new DPF, again, you're going to have the problem again and again. I think I've seen a couple of customers where they are now on their second or third DPFs and yet they cost um, thousands of dollars. So this does happen, right? So I strongly discourage um, that that second option uh, where I then recommend you to take a third option, which is converting your vehicle to non-DPF. Now understand this. Similar vehicles, an exact vehicle like this truck, which is being produced and manufactured in South Africa, does not have a DPF system, right? Here in Africa, we don't have those um, emission laws. So that DPF system is, is really unnecessary, right? So to say, right? Because we don't have such an emission laws that force these vehicles to have DPFs even in Africa. So you'd find even Mercedes plants, uh, Mercedes plants in South Africa, uh, Nissan, um, and your, your Toyota, when they are manufacturing these vehicles, they come without a DPF, right? So pretty much this vehicle that has come from Europe, which is the DPF, it, it can be converted to non-DPF um, um, if it is being done by a, a technician who, know what, who knows what they are doing, right? We are a specialist and we focus on these emission systems and we implement those conversions um, to non-DPF, right? So having have done a conversion to non-DPF, there are benefits that are going to follow, right? And let me talk about them. Um, so the first thing that you're going to notice, remember we talked about the checking, the, uh, those check engine lights that we're showing, that DPF light that was um, showing in the in the dashboard. They will completely go away. You will not see those uh, warning lights and those error messages about DPF. That's number one. The next thing that's going to happen is you're going to see a dramatic improvement in power, right? Um, your vehicle is going to perform better, right? Because it's going to use its fuel directly for the vehicle's performance and not for um, maintaining and trying to um, um, clean itself inside that DPF by uh, raising exhaust temperatures and overfueling and so forth. It will not do that. So you're going to see a dramatic improvement in power. The next thing that you're going to see is you're going to see um, you're going to notice that in terms of your fuel consumption again it is going to improve. Right. So again touching on what I talked about earlier to say that it will not try to do that self-cleaning process again which really consumes fuel as you are driving so you're going to see an improvement in fuel uh, fuel consumption and then 
if you had been seeing white smoke coming out from time to time just as the one that we had shown on the on the video um you're not gonna see the, those white smokes again right that white smoke is gonna disappear that car is going to perform um very well right so those are the advantages that you're going to see and you're going to see that that vehicle is actually going to perform better than vehicles that are coming equipped with those dpfs right generally that's how it is going to be in terms of performance and in terms of fuel consumption so those that's the solution that we have to offer right and um you don't have to worry where you are from right if as long as you can contact the numbers that will come on the screen as long as you can reach out to us it means we are able to help you regardless of where you are on the planet right regardless of where you are uh whether that be in our country because we're a company which is in zimbabwe or outside of zimbabwe we can really assist you so um um, that's pretty much it and that is our solution right? so back to the video that we were um, we we're working on you are going to see uh, us testing the car the truck it wouldn't exceed 40 miles per hour 40 kilometers per hour due to that uh, restriction uh, due to the the fact that it could not drive beyond 1000 uh, rest per minute so now it drives well and now it performs uh, fantastic and um, our solution comes it's actually a lifetime solution which comes with a guarantee right that's how good our solution is right and um that's that's really how how we solve them here the dpf team and i i hope you you enjoy uh you enjoyed watching this video and i hope you found it informative so i'm just gonna take you back to the truck and then you see um, us testing it and driving it and how well it is now responding as we drive it